Hello, my name is Maxim. I work as a browser engineer at Egalia and in today's presentation I'm going to present you the project I've been working on for almost four years called Chromium on Wayland. In this presentation I would like to present to you Egalia and talk about who we are and what we do in case you haven't heard about us. Then I'll talk about the history of the project, when it started, what problems we had, how it evolved and what uh, where we are now. Then I'll continue by presenting to you the Ozon component, explain the idea behind that, how you can reuse it in your own project. Then I'll talk a little bit uh, how Ozon integrated into Aura and how Ozon is used. I will also present to you some core classes of Ozone Wayland implementation using some diagrams. After that, I'll talk about the limitations or better to say problems that we faced while we've been working on the project and also explain how we overcome them. Then I'll compare the performance of the Ozone Wayland versus non-Ozone X11 on my Raspberry Pi 3 board. Uh, initially, I wanted to do that using the Renaissance Aircar M3 board, but as I said, everything uh, as I had everything ready for RPI, it was decided to use that instead. I will also talk a little bit about shipping of Ozone Wayland and why we also work on migration of X11 to Ozone. Ingalia is a free software consultancy with headquarters in Spain and developers all around the world. It was established in 2001 with two main goals, open innovation and plus development. At this moment, we are about 90 people working from different parts of our planet, and we are experts in various areas. For example, we have teams who work on browsers and client-side web technologies like Chromium, Blink, WebKit, including VPE and WebKit GDK+, Firefox, Server, Brave, and others. We also have a graphics team who is professional in graphics pipeline and rendering technologies, for example, hardware accelerated 3D APIs, Mesa, Vulkan drivers, and more. Our next team is proficient at compilers and programming languages and contributes to JavaScript through TC39, and they also work on V8, JavaScript core, and other stuff. Our multimedia team has experience with GStreamer, VA API and many other media solutions. We also work on embedded Linux device drivers, accessibility, virtualization, and cloud. Igale contributes to many different places and is a member of different groups or contributes to, this, to these different groups. So a uh, worldwide web consortium, which we where we co-chair the uh, area working group, also Linux Foundation. Chronos groups, ECMEA, and others. On this map, you can see where we are from. Egalians live and work in almost every part of the world. But okay, enough about Egalia. Let's start with the history of the project. The project was started in May 2016 by our fellow colleague Antonia Gomez. In the beginning, it was mostly a research project with a requirement to analyze whether Intel's implementation would be suitable for the upstream and whether we could merge it to the Chromium's mainline repository with as least changes as possible. We contacted some UI core engineers at Google and we were told that a new Moose plus Ash project is being developed and it would be wise to start to work with that from the beginning. Uh, that project goal was to turn UI into a separate service, and it was initially designed for Chrome OS needs. We also realized that Intel's approach wouldn't be accepted, as it was designed in such a way that Wayland connection was established in the GPU process. That is a uh, subject to security problems and sandboxing. Over a course of development and research, we had been refactoring the Moose and Ash project so that it could be reused for Linux. However, in March 2017, uh, we were told that we should hold on sending patches with changes for MUS, and it was decided to move downstream instead. In April 2018, when we went to BlinkCon 9 in Sunnyvale, we presented to Google our work in more detail, and after some discussions, it was decided to use 
uh, direct aura integration. I'll explain the design of ozone and our integration later. Since that time, we have started to work in upstream again. We merged uh, most of our patches that were related to ozone wellant and continued the development on the tip of the trunk. Uh, it's not really related to the ozone project now, but in 2019, it was announced that Moose plus Ash was finally discontinued. And from September 2012, ozone is part of the regular Chrome builds and can be enabled by the with the runtime flags you can see here on this slide. But what is Ozone? Ozone is a platform abstraction layer beneath the Aura window system that is used for low-level input and graphics. And it is worth noting that Aura is actually a well, as I said, windowing system for Chromium, that's internal component, which is platform independent, and you can treat it as, I don't know, GDK or anything like that. The goal of the project is to make porting to different platforms easy. First of all, Ozone is about interfaces, not if devs. That is, the differences between platforms are handled by platform specific objects instead of conditional compilation. All the implementation details are left to the platforms implementing different Ozone interfaces. Secondly, Ozone offers flexible interfaces. This must offer only what Chrome needs. This idea also excludes dependency on Chrome components. Only Chrome depends on Ozone. The third point is that ability to choose backends with runtime flags. That means a single binary can be reused many times. For example, in the Ozone support for Linux, at the moment it is possible to switch between Wayland, X11, and headless backends. On Chrome OS builds, there are even more options, DRN, X11, Wayland, and headless. And the last advantage of Ozone is that it eases downstream development. Not all of the backends end up in the upstream, and the goal is to make life of the of the downstream, play, um, downstream maintainers as easy as possible. With Ozone, one can plug in their own backend, for example, uh, GDK, QT, or whatsoever, and use that without a fear of next rebasing. So given that you are now familiar with what Ozone is, let's speak about the design of Ozone, how it integrates with Aura, and how Ozone Wellant is designed. Ozone lives uh, both in the browser process and the GPU process side. This diagram represents the UI part of the Ozone that lives in the browser process side. On the left side, you can see the platform independent Aura implementation for Ozone. And the right side, uh, you can see the Ozone implementation itself. So desktop window tree host platform is our main class that inherits window tree host platform that holds the platform window and it has a one-to-one -one relationship and in other words if a new window needs to be created a new desktop window tree host platform is created as well that class is responsible for forwarding various requests to platform windows that ozone implements Further, you can see a class called Desktop Window Tree Host Linux. That is the class that subclasses the Desktop Window Tree Host platform and has some Linux specific APIs. As you can see, there are X11 specific methods. That class also implements X11 extension delegate that is used by Ozone X11. Most probably will remove them once all the X11 specific bits are moved to Ozone. It's also worth noting that all the Ozone plat that other platforms such as Windows and Mac may also need to implement their own desktop window tree host, inheriting the desktop window tree host platform, of course, uh, when they start migration to Ozone because of some differences in each of the platforms. And going back to the desktop window tree host platform, you can see that it implements the platform window delegate as well. This delegate is the way how Ozone can communicate back to Aura. 
For example, it sends UI events notifies if the window got closed because of some compositor side actions. And it also sends notifications about bounds, changes, and others. On the right side is Ozone. As was said before, it's based on public interfaces and all the implementation details are hidden and are not visible from the outside. The core class that is also a singleton is Ozone Platform. It has methods that platform should implement. For example, initialization of UI, GPU, creation of windows and others. Here on the right side, I presented two Ozone implementations, X11 and Wayland, that provide some implementation details for both of the backends. You can see that in Wayland, we have a Wayland window that uh, implements the platform window interface, which is then used by Aura to communicate with Ozone windows. And you can also see the platform event dispatcher that Wayland window implements so, so that it can send out events processed by the event source in Ozone. And X11 basically does the same. So once Aura initialized Ozone and created a platform window, it can interact with Ozone using the platform window interface. In its own turn, Ozone communicates back to Aura using platform window delegate interface. For example, Aura can ask Ozone to show the window, maximize it, sense, set bounds, and so on. In response, it can receive an on activation changed on window state changed and other calls. Let's talk about the design of the Ozone Wayland in more detail. As was said before, our main entry point to Ozone is Ozone Platform Wayland that implements Ozone Platform. The Ozone Platform Wayland is responsible for creating all the core classes. For example, Wayland Windows, Wayland Connection, input method related classes and others. The Wayland connection is the core internal class. It handles a connection to Wayland and holds a Wayland display. It also handles Wayland seeds and registry. Whenever Wayland is initialized, Wayland connection receives globals from Wayland, binds the interfaces and creates C++ wrappers. For example, Wayland keyboard, Wayland pointer, and Wayland Touch. It also creates a Wayland event source that is the main processing unit for events. Whenever Wayland sends keyboard, pointer, or touch events, they are forwarded to Wayland event source that translates them to Chromium's internal tag, which is the UI event. And it also decides what Wayland window should receive the event. Of course, this decision is based on native capture that Chrome sends and also on the uh, uh, fo focus events. Wayland Event Source is also the owner of Wayland Event Watcher, the class that is responsible for watching for file descriptors readiness coming from Wayland Compositor so that events can be read from the pipe. Wayland Connection also owns Wayland ZVP Linux DMA buff Wayland DRM and Wayland Buffer Manager host. The last class is responsible for managing uh, Wayland buffers that can be backed by DMA buff or shared memory. I will explain how this works later. And the last important point is our design for surfaces. Here you can see our core class named Wayland window. Its fundamental piece is a uh, Wayland surface that owns a VL surface object. In turn, we have several types of windows that subclass Wayland window. For example, Wayland top level window that plays a role of a top level surface and owns a shell surface wrapper. This wrapper can be any surface, but as long as Chromium supports XDG shell v5 and XDG shell stable now, we only have support for that. But if you work on a downstream project and you use another type of shell, you can implement the shell surface wrapper for your own shell. Next, we have a Wayland pop-up for menu windows. It owns a shell pop-up wrapper. The shell pop-up wrapper is again an interface that, you shell, that your shell uh, can implement. In the upstream, 
it is uh, XDG shell, of course, and XDG shell v5. And the last one is Wayland Auxiliary Window. It owns a VL subsurface and it's mainly used for tool tips and drag and drop arrows. So that's about the core design. And let's speak about the problems we faced and how we tackled them. During the development of Ozone Wayland, we faced two problems. The first problem was Wayland EGL. Given that Wayland connection lives in the browser process and all the GPU related stuff happens, of course, in the GPU process, we had a problem. VL EGL surface couldn't be created because VL surface wasn't accessible from another process. This is the fundamental difference between X11 and Wayland. In X11, you can pass a handle for the X window to another process and use that. In Wayland, everything is different. Each client has a sort of sandbox connection, and other clients cannot manipulate objects that belong to other clients. However, it is still possible to use Wayland EGL when the in-process GPU flag is, has been passed. That is, GPU runs in a thread inside uh, the GPU process in this case. But we use uh, Wayland EGL only if uh, libgbm is not available. Another problem is the, is the tab dragging feature. It was, of course, possible to use the existing drag and drop protocol for that, but with a limitation. And the problem was that uh, the way the drag icon is set. For example, whenever a user drags a tab that becomes a window, Chromium must be able to continue showing the contents to the users. For, for that, it must be possible to use to reuse the very same surface as was used by a top-level window. However, the protocol didn't allow that because the L surface has already had a role. To fix the problem, a protocol extension was proposed. So let's talk about uh, let's talk more about each of the limitations in detail. And the first one is the graphics pipeline. So we had to make a design that would make it possible to fit, fit frame buffers with content uh, in the GPU process side and tell Wayland uh, which surface these buffers belong to in the browser process side. For that, it was decided to use DME buffers created with the help of libgbm library and of course DRM render nodes and use a surfaceless drawing that implied reusing of surfaces EGL implementation that Chromium has had. We also used Mojo for inter-process uh, communication, and Mojo is actually a collection of runtime libraries uh, providing a platform agnostic abstraction of common IPC primitives, a message ID, IDL format, and a bindings library with code generation for multiple uh, target languages to facilitate Convenient, convenient message passing across arbitrary inter and intra process boundaries. Uh, so we also used, in addition to just Mojo, we also used associated interfaces of Mojo so that we can ensure the order of messages. That was really important. Uh, that approach allows us to enable GPU member buffer support and use zero copy. Uh, with Wayland. So uh, some diagrams here are to help you to understand the design better. In the GPU process side, uh, you can see the Wayland Buffer Manager GPU that is owned by Ozone Platform. And uh, yeah, as I said, we usually have two instances of that one living in the GPU process side and another living in the browser process side. If we have only one process and we run in the in-process GPU, we uh, have only one instance of Ozone Platform, which is natural. So uh, the manager communicates with the Wayland Buffer Manager host that lives in the browser process side. You can see uh, this object in uh, blue. Uh, so it communication happens via Mojo, and we pass uh, DMA buff handles to that, also buffer IDs and surface IDs for buffer management. The host manager communicates with Wayland then and uh, tells it that it must attach a buffer X with ID Y 
to that surface and another buffer to another surface and so on. The buffers can be, cannot be attached to different surfaces as they belong only to a single surface. To ensure the correctness, some sanity checks are done before submitting the buffers and attaches, well, basically attaching them to surfaces, of course. So when Wayland Compositor releases a buffer after it was submitted, Wayland Buffer Manager host uh, sends an uh, on-submission call back to Wayland Buffer Manager GPU via uh, the module pipe. And the buffer manager GPU searches for the GPU surface that is that uh, this submission belongs to and notifies it about that. Same happens for presentation, but they can they uh, this presentation calls uh, happen a bit later than submission, and it is guaranteed that the submission for the specific buffer uh, will not come. Sorry, the presentation for the submission for the specific buffer will not come before the submission is actually uh, done. It's also worth noting that um, the DMA, DMA buffers are represented by GBM, GBM Pixmap Wayland instances that implement uh, native, native Pixmap. The GBM Pixmap Wayland uses libgbm to create DMA buff and then passes a DMA buff handle to Wayland Buffer Manager GPU, which then asks Wayland Buffer Manager host and as a result, Wayland Compositor to create uh, VL buffers via either Wayland ZVP Linux DMA buff or Wayland DRM wrappers. Uh, of course, uh, usage of Wayland ZVP Linux DMA buff and Wayland DRM de depends on availability of those and if both are um, supported by the environment by the system by the compositor the first one is preferred so if shared memory buffers are needed to be created as well then well and shim is used so second limitation uh, uh, we had a problem and it was impossible to use the existing surface as a drag icon drag icon for homeums so-called preview mode and the existing drag and drop protocol had limited functionality to fix the problem we came up with a protocol extension that would allow us to reuse the existing surface as a drag icon and allow a further reuse of that surface unfortunately i'm not the original author author of this but you can read more details via the link below and this presentation can be found from the uh, from this conference site uh, the implementation of the tight dragging feature is um, um, pretty complex in the middle you can see a wayland window drag controller that is responsible for dispatching drag events uh starting round loop and others in a nutshell the workflow is the following so start tab dragging create wayland data source and extended drag source when the mouse is far enough from the tab strip create a new vl surface map it notify the client about a new drag icon and then the client can swallow the request and start rendering the old surface as part of ui if you are interested in more details, prefer refer to the design doc. And yeah, it has quite extensive section that describes uh, this behavior. Now comes the most interesting part. One may ask, why do we need Wayland? And here is why. So on the left side, you can see Chromium running with Ozone Wayland on my Raspberry Pi 3 model B plus board and it runs on the Yocto Dunfield release with Western. On the right side, you can see Chromium running with X11 on the same device, but uh, on Yocto with how it's called SATO. Uh, so it's a pure X11 session. There is a big difference between the two. In the case of Wayland, Chromium could run at about 22 to 25 FPS with 100 fishes. Uh, while Chromium on X11 could only run at about 6 to 7 frames per second while running the same demo. I can also say to you that at the moment I am working on VA API support for Ozone Wayland 
And once, once that is out, there will be even more difference between X11 and Wayland. And the current plan is to use existing V API implementation that uh, Chrome OS with DRM uses. So you may ask uh, how you can try as on Wayland on your devices and what's the status of the project? We have already implemented mostly all the features that Chromium on X11 has had, and there are just a few missing, and one of those is, is the tap dragging feature. We also have a billboard that exercises test suits with Ozone Wayland X11 and headless backends. In total, there are 10 or 12 test suits running with more coming later once we get more capacity for that bot and this actually happens now as you listen to this presentation and last but not least ozone has been part of chrome releases since uh, version 87 so if you are using chrome for developers you can try ozone by using the runtime flags you see on this slide just run Chrome with a dash dash enable features equals use as a platform and then dash dash uh, Ozone platform equals Wayland or X11 if you wish to try Ozone X11 as well. And that's it. So uh, yeah, we also have a meta browser recipe uh, that we update on every release and you can try it from the OS system if you are interested in Yocto. So, uh, so far so good, but there is still one problem, which is X11. So in order to ship Ozone for Linux and make it default, it is required to also migrate X11 to Ozone. I don't think I'm going to go into much detail here, but here are some interesting facts. So we started working on that in May or June 2019, and the effort included refactoring of various X11 and Linux specific components so that they can be reused by Ozone. While doing so, we were also uh, enabling more and more features on Ozone Wayland like status icons and others. And in September 2012, we achieved a major milestone. As I said, Ozone became part of Chrome release for Linux. It is still disabled by default, but it was something that users could start experimenting with. At the moment, we are working towards refactory components that are still X11 specific and sharing them with Ozone X11. Now, most of the parts are shared by both X11 and Ozone X11 with X11 specific bits laying in a common directory under uh, UI base X. The difference is that Ozone X11 accesses them through Ozone implementation, while non-Ozone X11 X accesses them uh, directly. Once that is done and all the available test suits are enabled on the build bot, we will start a Finch trial. In the beginning, about 10% of users will have Chrome with Ozone enabled by default. If the trial is successful, we will increase the number of users using Ozone. And once 100% of users use Ozone, non-Ozone X11 will be finally disabled and removed. And I hope that uh, the finish trial will start next year in Q1 or Q2 at latest. And by the end of 2021, Ozone will be default for Linux and not Ozone X11 will be finally removed. Everything may happen earlier or a bit later, but it was a lot of work for us. Just a single Ozone Wayland counts for 400 patches with many others outside Ozone directory. Thank you for watching this presentation. I hope you enjoy it. And if you have any questions, please, don't hesitate to contact me or my colleagues. Thank you.